Hey, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. Doing a little bit of fall garden here. I'm putting my uh, cold frame, putting the lids back on these and uh, trying a few things out this, this year to see uh, what kind of stuff I can get going on here for the winter. So uh, why don't you come along and have a look. All right, so this is garden number one. The cold frame on the far right hand side. And uh, let me show you what I've done in here. Now I did this uh, all around midweek. Move this a bit closer here. What I did here was uh, I planted some spinach. So I put uh, all the existing mulch along the edge, almost like like an insulation. So all the way around, I've got three inches of uh, hay and grass. And uh, and well, let me let me back up. So the first thing I did was I put, so if you look underneath here, paper. So I would put paper all the way to within about the center inch. So there's a piece of paper going to here, and from this end here there's a piece of paper going. So there's basically just a strip of soil down the middle, and the rest is all paper against the soil. And then I banked up all of this mulch against the wood to hold the heat in, right? Basically to insulate. So what I'm trying to do with this entire cold frame, because I, I find it still gets quite cold in the winter, is I'm trying to keep this strip of earth warm. And uh, the paper goes, see that's paper, that, I don't know if you can see that, but it's paper goes right to there, and the paper goes right to there. So it's really just a, a very, you see that? Very narrow strip, right? The paper goes from all the way to here, and from the front all the way to here. So it's just a narrow two inch strip, the whole length of it. So the whole organization of this cold frame is about keeping that center thawed all winter so the stuff can grow. And I planted spinach here, really tough. I found of the things I plant here, that's just about the toughest thing that grows. It can it can take being frozen, it can take being frosted, it can take a lot of abuse. Um, I, I've also read and experienced uh, corn mosh uh, is, is even tougher than spinach, but I really can't stand the taste of it. <laughs> if I was in a survival situation, I would grow it, but I'm not. So, uh, yeah, spinach is, I just like it more. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's a bit late to be sowing spinach. You know, I sowed this about for day, I sold this during the during the week. I was basically dark out here. I was out here with a headlamp, um, but I sold that spinach. Um, you know, first week of October. It's a bit late for all that, but it, it's warm in here. This this is warm to the touch. There's a. It's not even that sunny today, but there's enough sun that it's heated up this bed. Of course, I've lost it all by opening this. When you open it up, it's got this beautiful seaweed smell. You don't have to use seaweed. This is just what I've got, right? Um, so I just use the mulch ahead line around. And as the spinach starts to grow, if it does, I'll, I'll add more um, mulch to the center here. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that works. So that's the spinach bed there. Now this bed here, the middle one, I'm going to do something a little bit more uh, high probability. So right now there's nothing in here. Take you a bit closer. And uh, there's nothing going on. I grew uh, tomatoes here this year and they were turned out okay. Uh, but uh, so it's all just empty. I just cleaned everything out took all the mulch out took everything out right so there's Nothing in there right now What I'm gonna do is pluck up some kale from different places in my garden and Just like the one over there. I'm gonna put them right down the middle actually a little bit closer to the back because it's, it's facing south this way so that wood will uh, pick up a bit of heat right so I'm gonna put it maybe almost two-thirds of the way back because um, the, the Sun is a very low angle let me let me just show you this from another perspective giving an appreciation for what I'm, I'm going for here with the, uh, the the science behind this okay so here's the cold frame I'm, I was just talking about and that way is south in the winter uh, the Sun comes up in the southeast you are standing in east. You are east. That's west. That's south. In the winter, the sun comes up in the southeast, 
it rises. It's never directly overhead. It, it's, it's always sort of in the, you know, on an angle, maybe 45 or slightly steeper, but basically it rises in the southeast and, and goes up and it stays at an angle. It's never directly overhead in this part of the world, right where I live, um, Nova Scotia, Canada, at this, at this uh, latitude, right? And then it sort of, it sets in the, uh, in the uh, southwest. So it's always coming at an angle like this, right? In the morning it's coming like on, towards it like this, and in the afternoon it's coming from an angle like that, but it's, it's always on that sort of diagonal. So it's never directly overhead. So the area that's from here and a few inches in is always in a kind of shade. It really never gets warmed up. So there isn't going to be a lot going on in that part of the garden. The, the first from the south edge and about eight or ten inches in, there's not going to be anything going on because the sun's at an angle. Right? It's not going to be coming straight down. And it's not going to be coming in from the side. It's not going to be coming in from this way. Right? As, as we move into winter and it gets colder and colder, we're in um, uh, just to the end of the first, I, I guess it's, uh, what is it, October 13th today. Um, it, you know, the sun's just going to get more and more southerly, <laughs> right? So uh, there's no point in planting really close to the wall here. I should be back a bit where the, so the sun, because of the angle it's going to be on, can actually direct itself at what I've planted. So all I'm going to do is, is pluck up some kale from different parts of the garden and stick them in here and then I'm going to put some paper down to prevent any, because you know, I've, I've sort of roughed the soil up a bit as I was moving everything out and I took, I took some of the mulch out and stuff like that. So I'll put some paper back down because I'm sure I've stirred the weed seeds up. There's always weed seeds everywhere. And I'll put some paper down so they don't really germinate. And then I'll put mulch on top of the paper to sort of super insulate the inside of this and also to feed the soil. So uh, let's go pluck up some, some, uh, some kale plants. So I got three kale plants right here just growing uh, at the edge of my parsnip garden where the herbs are and they just grew on their own. So these are just um, kale seeds that fell to the ground. A number of years ago I had a, a kale plant survive the winter and it survived the winter because it was inside a little temporary greenhouse I'd made. Uh, I found that generally speaking where I live here in this location, I've tried this with a number of kale for a number of years, kale cannot survive the winter. The, the roots freeze and the plant, the whole plant dies. I've tried it enough times, but one year I had kale moved into a cold or into a, uh, a sort of temporary haphazard poor man's greenhouse that I'd slapped together and that kale survived the winter. And I had two of them actually and they went to seed and the seeds I got from those kale, the best <laughs> seeds I've ever had. Um, so these kale here are our children of that process and I got some more around the garden. So those are the ones, because they've given me good results and they're very tough plants, those are the ones I want. So I'm going to pluck these up and uh, I'm going to take off uh, a good deal of the leaves to, to reduce the pressure on the root system of the plants while it adapts and I'm going to move these into the cold frame. And nothing too fancy about how I'm pulling these in, I'm just, just kind of dragging them under the ground. I'm going to try to keep the, the root ball on them to the best of my ability. Um, but uh, I find these plants are kind of tough, they can usually survive a bit of abuse especially if you pull some of the leaves off right and and sort of lower the uh, you know, by removing some of the leaves you lower the demand you're putting on the plant and it doesn't need as much water it doesn't need as much nutrients because there's less leaves all right so that's three right there I got a couple more in, in with my um, Swiss chard here these are the Siberian variety I don't have any red. I'll pull that one. I really hope they make it through the winter so I can get some seeds off of them. I'm going to get as much of that root as I can. I think about six kale is about all I can fit in this cold frame. Must have another one somewhere here. Alright, so here we are. I'm going to put these uh, kale down the middle, but a little bit towards the back for the reasons I just explained. I got uh, really two different kinds of varieties here. I got the Siberian kind with the white stem and the red Russian with the red stem. And uh, I got six. I think everyone should have just 
just enough room to uh, another reason to set them back is it's, it's higher at the back right they're angled to capture sun from the south so it's higher at the back so they'll have a little more real estate <laughs> for growing right so some of them like this monster right get uh, quite uh, tall I'll give everyone their own space hopefully we have just enough room for everyone to get along here again these aren't a lot of plants right I mean this is why my videos I've you know sort of beat up on cold frames before and I mean it's it's just if you think you're gonna be getting a ridiculous amount of food out of them I think you're fooling yourself um, but you know it's, it's worth working with them and I mean, the main reason I'm doing the kale here is because I want this variety to go to seed next year and uh, in my experience they the roots the stem the sort of life of the plant it cannot survive the winter if it's just exposed to the elements. It needs some kind of protection. I've, where I am, Zone 6A, with my conditions, I've not had them be able to make it through the winter. I have friends who live in the same province as me, maybe a 30 minute drive away, um, it's, who, who've had them uh, survive the winter. I have a friend that lives just uh, in, in, in town here in Halifax, maybe 20, 25 minutes away. and. Uh, Hers made it no problem it's on the south facing side of a hill. It's just a bit more protected and a little bit more warm in that location uh, The winter here is just kind of foggy and bleak and uh, I've just found I've, I've Tried multiple years to just leave them in the ground last year I left all my kale on the ground all winter long and they none of them started sprouting the following spring But the year I had a kale in a makeshift uh, uh, Greenhouse the kale survives. So I'm hoping that happens here and then I can get some seeds and, and keep this variety going because it's it's a fairly tasty uh, productive variety that basically you know you plant it in uh, May and it grows all summer and keeps giving you kale right up until uh, December so that's my kind of plant and it tastes really good too. All right, you might have noticed in that last video, I pulled some, uh, I don't know if you could see that from the angle, but I pulled some of the leaves off. I'm basically just gonna pop off. Uh, I got a pile over here, I'll have these for supper tonight, but uh, any leaf that looks uh, compromised in any way, it's really not adding much to the plant. Um, and I want everything in this garden to be sort of clean slate, right? So everything compromised, I'm just gonna pull. By doing this also I, I sort of ease up the strain I'm putting on the root system of the plant right because it's there's less foliage it doesn't eat quite as much so it can adapt to its its new home so to speak right so I'm almost turning it into a, a little plant and I find this is a great way to uh, when you're sort of doing this kind of transplanting method it's a great way to help the plant uh, adapt to the new situation. So I'm just turning my plants into transplants, really. Now that the plants are growing in this protected system, they won't be quite so uh, beset by pests. Boy, these have been attacked pretty good. So hopefully these ones will be all right. If they're not, I'll give them a shot of that uh, end all or trounce or whatever. That should work. 
All right, so they're in the ground. Now I just gotta put some paper mulch down. All right, so I got some of these old uh, leaf bags. These are actually from last last spring, believe it or not. They just they, these have been blowing around in the, in the outside of my yard for an entire season. Uh, it's amazing to me these things. They break down very quickly when, if they're like in contact with the soil, but if they're just sitting around, they don't tend to disappear. Uh, and people haven't started putting leaves out yet this year, so I can't replenish my supply. Anyway, they're a great, uh, a great weed suppressor, and they last, you know, a good season or so. It really depends. Yeah, that's give or take, right? But they do. They last long enough to suppress, they last long enough to do their job, right? To suppress weeds in a way that's uh, satisfactory uh, to me. And I find the easiest way to sort of, I've used knives and stuff like that, but I find the scissors do a better job of processing them down. I'm, I'm doubling this up. I'm using basically like, and they're already double ply, so I'm basically using four layers of uh, what, what, could be defined as heavy uh, craft paper, which is what this stuff is. It's just paper. And really, if you think about it, it's it's wood chips, right? Because paper comes from trees. <laughs> so, really what I'm putting down here is a kind of wood chips. You know, people are always, um, oh, how do you get wood chips? Uh, who, who delivers your wood chips? Where do you get them? Da, 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 da. And, uh, Man, the easiest way to get wood chips is uh, go to a dumpster and get some cardboard. Because <laughs> uh, that's wood chips in all the ways that matter, right? If you're if you're really unable to locate them or whatever, uh, some cardboard or, or paper like this and some leaves or some grass clippings, those things in combination have uh, all the properties of wood chips. Uh, if not, they might even be better because they're sort of more more broken down in a sense. Um, so your, your worms will, and the organisms in your soil have no problem breaking those things down. And um, Most cardboard, if there is any adhesive in it, it's just, just like a starch-based adhesive. I've never read anything that suggests it's not, you know, uh, organically friendly or, you know, ecologically irresponsible to use cardboard in a garden. I don't worry. I certainly don't worry about it in the broader scheme of things, right? Uh, <laughs> state of the world as it is and so on. Uh, I, don't, I don't lose sleep over that. So, uh, I'm just going to throw the rest of this in here just because it's going to go somewhere. All this will get eaten by worms. And it'll all just disappear. And it'll all just feed the garden. And I didn't pay a cent for it. All right? And this is going to suppress the weeds. Alright, so that's all I'm doing there. Now i got some of this... Uh, Uh, grass, I find uh, grass is a good insulator, you know, it's uh, it, kind of like hay. So I'm just going to put some of this down around the outer edge because I want to keep, right, the outer edge is, is the sort of like the wall of this house. So, you know, this is like your R20, your insulation. So I'm putting this stuff down to keep the outer edge warm. Gonna go grab a bit more. This grass has a very sort of pungent smell. I mean, it's been, you can see there's this white in with the grass. It's like a, a kind of a, a fungus, I guess, fungi. So, uh, grass has already begun to broke down, break down. Probably some kind of mycorrhizal fungi of some kind, I don't really know. Uh, all I know is it's not going to hurt anything. <laughs> so, and again, I'm just putting that all around that perimeter. Then I'm going to put some seaweed right against the kale because, um, I mean, you could just continue with the grass. I just I have seaweed and and uh, I, I think it adds a lot of nutrients. I would never go and buy this stuff if I lived in the Midwest or somewhere nowhere near the ocean. I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't give seaweed a second thought. I wouldn't lament the fact that I don't have any. Also just looks cool to have like this sort of inner seaweed ring. Also I find in the winter because the especially in a cold frame like this because the seaweed is dark it uh, sort of heats up and gets it gets hot. Um, so it's you know it's creating the sort of the conditions that I want right because I want I don't know why they call them cold frames, they should call them heat frames because you want heat, <laughs> right? The goal is heat, not cold, so they should be called heat frames. <laughs> so this seaweed, at least in my experience, it's, it's, it's a terrible, it's not, it's not a very good insulator. Hay and leaves are better at insulating. But if you can get some sun on seaweed and uh, you know, give it the conditions it wants. It tends to get pretty hot, um, and uh, you know you get that sort of bioactivity going. I mean, we'll see how this works. This is a bit of an experiment. I've done things like this before, but not exactly using this approach. Uh, but uh, I'm fairly optimistic this is going to work good. I've used approaches. Let's just say I've used approaches like this with success. I haven't done this exact same thing, but I've done something like this before and it's worked fine. So, uh, very optimistic. Alright, so all that's left to do is give us a good blast of water and close down the lid. Anyway, so that's uh, a kale garden planted for the winter. I got the spinach there. I don't know how well that spinach is going to do. I honestly think it's a bit late in the year for sowing seeds and stuff like that, but we'll see. It's a good experiment. So, you know, those were sown the first week of October and we'll have a record of that for the following year. Uh, in my opinion, if you want fall spinach, you, you really plant like late August, uh, early September. You know, that, that's, I get good results doing that. Um, so uh, we'll see. I mean, the days are just going to get shorter and shorter and, uh, you know, once you get into December, January, you're, you're kind of out of business in the in the sun and heat department, especially here where it's so overcast uh, in the winter. We don't get a lot of sun anyway, even though we, we might get eight hours or six hours of sun a day. But, you know, you're, it's overcast here, so really. Even though the sun's up, you're not getting any sun because it's overcast because we're near the coast and that sort of thing. Anyway, I'm rambling here. Um, there's two beds done. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do in the next one, but you get the general... I thought I'd just walk you through what I'm doing here so you get the general idea of, uh, you know, if you live somewhere cold, you got to plant something tough that can take the cold. And there's only a handful of things that are really tough. There's, there's a long list of things you can get on the internet that people say are tough, but uh, there's only a handful of things that can really take the cold. I find the leaves of kale and spinach can, they can freeze solid and then the next day they can thaw out and live. Uh, a lot of plants, they say it can take the cold, but really what they mean is that, the, like they'll say, uh, Swiss chard can survive to uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius. And uh, it may be true that the actual plant, the roots and all that stuff can survive, but the leaves can't. You get a good frost, all, all leaves in your, or like 60% of the leaves on your Swiss chard just die. I've shown, I think I've shown that enough here. Um, you know, all my Swiss chard died in... Uh, in June when I had a frost and the plant survived and I got new new greenery out of the plant uh, but all the leaves were just just turned to nothing right um, so that's what I'm talking about when I say it can't take the cold so you want something where the leaf can freeze solid and thaw out and still be the leaf can still be viable and uh, there's only a handful of corn mosh will do that I'm not too fond of the taste um, some kinds of kale can do that and uh, like this this Russian kale and uh, spinach can do that, and I'm sure there's lots of other things too, and I'm sure I'll get lots of comments in the comment section. If you got any ideas for me, let me know. Maybe, uh, maybe the plant that goes in that third bed will be from the comment section. <laughs> I'm always willing, I'm always up for something new. Uh, that's the beauty of being a gardener. You're always optimistic, and you're, you can't, uh, the, you know, you're always uh, excited about the next uh, crazy idea you get for uh, something that you think is going to break the rules, right? So um, I hope you found that interesting and gave you some good ideas. And if it did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, 
Get out there, find something to do, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>